Okay, um, good day to everyone. Today we are our, at our third talk of our Rua series and of course you can see on the screen we have um, Father Derek here with us. But before we go into the topic, let's start with a prayer which uh, we did in the last two weeks and uh, we'll do it today again. So let's pray together. Let's mark ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God who instructed the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same spirit to relish what is right and always rejoice in your consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, yeah, so we have um, Father Derek with us over here. And um, we have seen you on screen, uh, mm -hmm. on the pulpit, and even recently, Catholic Radio. Yeah, mm, and, okay. and yes. So, uh, Father, can you just uh, share with us uh, what is Franciscan, uh, what is OFM, what is Friar, all this is like interesting terms uh, that a lot of us do not understand. So when we see you, do we call you Father or do we call you Friar? And yeah, when this very cool hood that you have behind you, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, 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 this introduction one. of yourself. Uh, yeah, 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 this, this. <laughs> In my Jedi hood. Yes, yes, your Jedi hood. Okay, hello guys. Um, good to see you on screen. Uh, and it's good to be here to just be with you and just to share a little bit about who we are and uh, basically from who Francis is, we hope to just introduce to you his love adventure with God. Um, and so we come to the many questions that Paul has. He's very inquisitive. Uh, and we have got, what are uh, OFM? Huh? Uh. Okay, we start with OFM first. Uh, some people like to tease us and say OFM stands for out for money, that we're always begging. But true, like, we are beggars. Um, and actually, the OFM stands not for Order of Franciscans, missionaries or something, but it stands for Order of Friars Minor. And St. Francis coined the term himself. Friars come from the Latin frate, which means brother. So we're meant to be brothers to one another. Yeah? Uh, and I think you can already start seeing like, hmm, brother, son, sister, moon, huh? And uh, the M stands for minor. Minor, uh, we'll talk a little bit Maybe I can introduce that now because minor is actually a social class uh, in the times of medieval Italy where Francis came from. So you've got minor, you have major. Mm. So the majors were the nobles and minor were the everybody else. And Francis actually wanted to climb the social ladder as a minor, a rich minor. He's a cloth merchant, but he wanted to become a major by becoming a knight. Mm. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But... Can you imagine when he decided to call his order minor? Ah, he actually embraced his social class. So he has come to terms and be very comfortable with who he really is and what God is calling him to. Mm. And I think that's part of our spiritual journeys as well. Right, who we are called right. to be, really. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Okay. So um, let's, let's dive into our topic today. Today we are going to talk about um, this very great sin yeah, that a lot of us are very... We, we know um, St. Francis... Um, but maybe today we can we can talk about um Saint Francis and also and um, particularly to this song um Chronicle of um the Sun mm -hmm. yeah and to help us to go into uh dive into a bit deeper of the spirituality and how can we use this song and the spirituality of Saint Francis to pray mm -hmm. yeah right okay so um Father take it away and um inspire us so um let's decide to enter into today's session. Uh, if you allow me, I'll just share my screen. I've prepared something. I hope it'll be useful. Anyway, I have to show you a bit of Assisi first and the person of Francis before coming to this prayer called Canticle of Brother's Son, which we're quite familiar. You know, we, we sometimes sing, uh, uh, we sing, uh, what up? The heavens are telling the glory of God, right? Yes. The Canticle of, of the Son. Uh, that's that's uh, from there. Uh, and we were actually very familiar with the prayer of St. Francis. The, Make me a channel of your peace. Uh, actually, sorry to disappoint you, he didn't write it. It was actually attributed to him. Um, and it was actually a recent composition in the 1900s. 
And but because the word sounds so Franciscan that they thought it's St. Francis, but he didn't write it, right? But the Canticle of Brother Sun is really written by him. So let's, let's go into it. Mm. And I've had this subtitle called A Song from a Free Heart. In able to sing this, the heart must be free. So one of the question is actually to ask us, are we really free? Lah? And then free from what? Because modern day, uh, freedom, even the topic of freedom is like, I want to do whatever I want. But is that how we Catholics really understand freedom? Uh, so we can see that the canticle actually indicates that this song is from a free heart, the free heart of St. Francis. So let's go to the next slide. And this next picture is a wow picture. My friends, this is a sissy taken from the air on a day where there's fog. Um, and that's what happens in the middle of Italy. Sometimes you've got this heavy fog. So here is the Basilica of St. Francis. And when he was about to die, the brothers already knew that he's going to be very famous and people are going to come visit. They asked him, where do you want to be buried? He said, oh, in the hill of hell. You can see uh, that this, the Basilica is built on a slope. Uh, and that was where criminals were executed. So they call it the hill of hell. Mm. But because now that the bones are there, it has become the hill of paradise because the people have gone there to look for peace to look for the goodness within uh, that sometimes we get lost. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because Francis, when he goes out and preaches to people, he always say, peace and all good. Pax et bonum in Latin, pace bene in, in Italian. And then behind that, you see that's a whole town of Assisi. Oopsie doopsie. Um, and then this is a, a different view of Assisi. Uh, so we have the same uh, basilica here on the left, St. Francis. And St. Clair Basilica is right on the right. And these two basilicas actually envelops a sissy, one on the left and one on the right. And remember, St. Francis Basilica is to house his bones. St. Clair Basilica is to house St. Clair's bones. So that means at the time of Francis and Clair, these two basilicas weren't there. San Rufino on the left, a little bit, of St. Clair is the cathedral of uh, Assisi. And San Rufino is also uh, the patron saint of Assisi, not Francis. Francis is the patron saint of Italy. And that's where Francis and Claire got baptized. Piazza del Comune is where the commune is, where everyone gathers for everything. Parties, la, where they've got lawsuits, la, everything, they go to the Piazza del Comune. And it's very important, this piazza, the square, because above this piazza, the people who live there are the nobles, the maiores, the majors, remember? And then anyone who lives below is the minores, the minors, everyone else. Mm. Um, and the social class was split this way. Uh, and you can see the word ma Roca Maggiore uh, uh, here. It's on top of the hill, the highest point of Assisi. And this Roca Maggiore means it is the fortress where the, the Holy Roman Emperor, his house is there. His, his castle, his fortress is there. So he's the most noble, and then he's on top of the hill. Everybody else at the bottom. So even the water uh, is the cleanest on top, of course. Then as it flows down, the water becomes even dirtier and dirtier. Mm. But all within the city walls. And then right at the right, you can see the word Mount Subasio, and that's the hill uh, that is at the back of Assisi. And that's where Francis goes to pray in the caves. Yeah? Um, so I'll talk a little bit about St. Francis. Huh? So Francis is very ordinary. Uh, he very vain pot one, just like me. That's why I joined Franciscans, because I can connect with him. Uh, and because he's a rich cloth merchant, his father owns this clothing shop in a big house with, with warehouse, and where did they get the clothes from? So we always know fashion capital like, like Milan in Italy, but actually the, the fashion capital, we always know it's French. So even in the time of Francis, France was a place where you get beautiful cloth. So uh, the father was obsessed with everything French, uh, French cloth, French women. So Francis's mother was actually said to be a French woman and her name was Lady Pica, which probably she came from Picardy. So he will go to France buy back cloth, come back to Assisi and sell, obviously at a higher price, that's how he gets his money. Yeah? Um, so Francis grew up in the environment, rich, uh, had everything, clothes, and because the father was so rich, he was so happy for the son to actually take his money and then go for parties. So the boys of Assisi uh, loved to go partying with Francis because Francis would pay for the makan, la, for the beer la, and everything. Um, so wherever Francis was, party came alive. And then it was said that Francis was a troubadour. A troubadour is someone who sprouts poems and sings. And apparently he can sing uh, and serenade in French. 
So can you imagine him in the CC walking below Tabor's uh, uh, balcony and then serenading them in French? No wonder the, the, the women were all falling off the balconies onto him. Just like with all boys, they have big dreams. Like we always say Italian boys all want to become soccer players. Um, so I don't know what your dreams are. Uh, some of us want to be artists. Maybe some of us want to be lawyers, doctors, policemen, prison officer, or, or, or botanists or something. Uh, for the boys of that time, they had wanted to be knights. Because you've got King Arthur la, from like in England. So all these stories of chivalry, knighthood, and then marry a noble woman, a lady. This was the dream of the boys at that time. Francis had this dream as well. And then, because... To be mayores or minores, minor, uh, major or, or minor, is by blood. You, you cannot want something, except if you go into knighthood. You go and fight in a war, you come back victorious, then all the Tsabo would all, all swoon over you. So Francis went up to war. Uh, a sissy fought Perugia, a neighboring town. Ayah, poor thing, lost. Got captured by Perugia because he was rich, he wasn't killed. So what happens in medieval Italy is, don't have all this like Geneva Convention la, and all that. Huh? Then you take prisoner of war, you must look after them. Uh, what they did was the poor people, they split your body up and then strewn you across the battlefield to warn enemies, hey, don't play with me. Huh? If you play with me, you become like that. The rich people, they take over to, into their city, have a dungeon as the jail, and then just stuff you there. And Francis was there for one year, waiting for his father to ransom him. So when he was ransomed, he came back, felt very, very sick, was again on bed for one year to recuperate. Then another call for war came up between the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor. So he was going to fight on the side of the Pope against the, the Roman Emperor, um, King Frederick II at that time. And so got sent off party and all that stuff. So the father was very happy. Oh, my son is back. Yeah, I got energy again. Gave him a horse, gave him an armor, sent him off to war. The next city they were at, at Spoleto, he had a dream. Um, and in this dream, the voice said, whom do you want to serve, the master or the servant? And then he said, of course I want to serve the master. Then the voice said, then why are you following the servant? Go back to Assisi, I will tell you what to do. So this statue that you see in front of us, this picture, right? Uh, actually, it's poetic license because like I mentioned, no armor, no horse. Yeah, but this is a poetic license to show like, oh, you're very sad and stuff like that. Just came back from, uh, supposed to go to war, but didn't. So it's a shameful time. So it's during this time that the voice said, go back to a CC, I'll tell you what to do. But did the voice come? So like silence left. So it was this time that he was very confused. So it was his early 20s then. They know when we are confused, right? We don't know who we are. What's our purpose in life? What are we going to do? And in our darkness and confusion, we absolutely hate people coming to talk to us, uh, especially parents concerned parents are like, ah, boy, ah, how are you? Ah? Then we just want to slam the door and like, mom, talk to my palm. Um, and then we just want to lock ourselves up. So caves become very, very important for Francis. Remember I mentioned Mount Subasio up in the mountains? Francis always went up to these caves in the mountains, the natural caves in the woods. Uh, you can see at the top picture, uh, we still have these so when Francis had brothers, the first brothers, they keep going back into the mountains to pray. So this, the, the power of Franciscan mission is actually in personal prayer, meditation, contemplation, time with God. And this is after this, the, the example of Francis, who went into the mountains to just spend days, weeks, and we call it the cave of the heart, because that's where we discover who we are and who God is. And that was Francis's prayer all the way until the end of his life. Huh? Two years before he died, on Mount Alvernia, not your Thompson Road one, but the real one in Italy, where he received the stigmata, when he went up on this mountain to pray, he, he prayed for two things. Who are you, God? And who am I? Who are you, God? And who am I? To indicate that the mystery of God, the depth of the mystery of God is so deep. And then the depth of the mystery of the self is also so deep that throughout life, we have, to, we have to keep plumbing the depths, go and discover more and more and more. So while asking all these questions, at the end of this prayer time on Mount Alvernia, he got the stigmata. Mm. Besides caves, he went into broken down churches uh, to pray. Because when the church is broken down, nobody goes, ma, so he can be alone again. One of these churches is San Damiano or St. Damien. 
And he prayed before the crucifix in this way. Yeah? So maybe we pray together now, um, silently in our hearts, this prayer that Francis prayed in front of the crucifix. Okay? Most High, glorious God, enlighten the darkness of my heart and give me true faith, certain hope, and perfect charity, sense and knowledge, Lord, that I may carry out your holy and true command. Then one day, in San Damiano, he heard the, a voice. He looked up at the crucifix, and then the crucifix spoke to him, and in one of the stories, it actually said that the, 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 the mouth actually moved. Uh, and what he heard was, go, Francis, and repair the church which you see is falling down. And then Francis, very literal one, he like, eh, yeah, oh, the church is broken down. Okay, I'll go and get some bricks and then I'm going to build it up. And he actually did. He went to go and take some of the father's cloth, go to nearby uh, town of Foligno, sold the cloth, sold the horse on which the cloth was put on, and then brought back the money, gave to the priest of, of San Damiano. But I think God wants Francis not to just simple, simple give money and like, nah, uh, for your church building fund. I think God wanted the process of building stones, begging for stones, the process of begging in humility and the actual building, the hard work, that my contribution is with my hands. And actually, the building is not just the physical, because he rebuilt San Damiano, he rebuilt another church called San Pietro de la Spina, and he rebuilt Samir the Angels, obviously not the Bukibato one, mm. the real one, the little chapel. Uh, he rebuilt three churches. Then after that, he said, hey, God is not asking me to rebuild physical churches but the church that is the people of God. He wants me to build up living stones, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so therefore he stopped building the churches and went around and preached with the words, peace and all good. But for Francis, God is good. Look at Genesis 1, the creation story. And especially after God created humankind, he said it's very good. So we are good. But do we believe that? And if we are good, Others are good as well, deep down inside. And that's why Francis can encounter people who are scary, threatening, uh, people who are invading privacy, la, insulting you, but can still see that the person has got goodness within. Yeah? So he went to rebuild the living stones yeah? so that the church is falling down. And one of the things about rebuilding life uh, is embrace, the acceptance, the welcome of another, especially the one who is outcast rejected and nobody wants to touch or to go to. You know, we sometimes in groups, right, we have got people who are very irritating, talk too much, just like me, or just don't know how to relate to people. Some people are just a little bit like interesting character. Lah, huh? um, Francis was a little bit like that, um, especially with lepers. You know, even in, during the time of Jesus, lepers had to like pronounce themselves unclean, unclean. During the time of Francis also. So lepers live outside the city walls, much um, like the dead, right? It was just during this time of his conversion, he was praying in caves, praying in the chapels, the dilapidated ch churches. One day in the fields, he heard this unclean, unclean and the bells. And instead of his usual, ah, let me get out of here, because remember, Francis is very vain. Can you imagine a vain person kind of leprosy, where your fingers, la, toes, la, drop off, la, then your face disfigured. La. It's actually the scariest thing to ever catch. Yeah? And then you'll be outside the city walls, nobody want to touch you, nobody want to go near you, your family can't even see you or want to come near you. So it's actually a very frightening disease. Actually very similar to what we have with like COVID now, you know, that if you have to be in isolation, people can't come near you. Yeah? Um, and it's one day that he heard this bell. Instead of running away, he actually got down. And then he went to the leper and then embraced the leper. One of the stories even had him kissing the leper. And you have thought that it would give the leper life because leper don't have anybody to touch. Ma. So actually with someone touching, that's almost like life coming back to him, you know. Um, but interestingly, for Francis, for him as well, it gave life to him. So at the end of his life, uh, he actually uh, dictated his testament. Testament is what we, we, we say before we die. And he said, the Lord led me among lepers and what was bitter turned into sweetness. Because you're so bitter to see lepers, right? But in the experience of encountering the leper, it was turned to sweetness. Leh. Something that was like difficult, unpleasant, or we think 
it's unpleasant or difficult or yucky. But actually, when we encounter it, uh, there's sweetness, there's grace, there's life. And then after that, Francis started to live with lepers already, to look after them, tend after their wounds. Where did this come from? And this one's important because this will be linked with Canticle of Brother Son, which we're going to talk about very, very soon. Mm. This is linked with Jesus. Francis, his love adventure with Jesus is because he wants to follow Jesus radically and completely. And for him, Jesus, the amazing thing about Jesus is Christmas. Not because we get presents and all that. For him, he couldn't get his head around. Wow, you are God and you want to become man leh. Like one of us eh? You are God leh. Why do you even want to become one of us into this body that's full of temptation, struggles, difficulties, emotions running up and down. One day I feel like that, one day I feel like another way. One day I feel okay, one day I don't feel okay. And Jesus came into this body and made it sacred. And from Philippians 2, 6 and the following, um, this is actually the crux of Francis' spirituality and poverty. That even though Jesus was in the form of God, Jesus did not cling equality with God, something to be grasped, but emptied himself. And I think you have talked about self-emptying in the previous sessions. To empty himself, uh, to become as men. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet. Uh, and then embraced the cross and to die a shameful death on the cross. So the, the technical word here, in St. Paul's letter, the Greek is kenosis, yeah, which means self-emptying. First kenosis, divine become human. Second kenosis, as human, he took a shameful death. Shameful and painful death. So we come down to modern day. Yeah? So our Pope is called Pope Francis and he recently released uh, 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 an encyclical called Laudato Si, which is on the care of creation, our common home. But where does the word Laudato Si comes from? It's actually Italian. Uh, actually, not even just Italian, it's in the Umbrian dialect of St. Francis um, for the canticle. Like, praise be you, my Lord, first, first through brother son. So the praise be in Italian is laudato si. So he used the, this words from the canticle to name his encyclical for the care of creation. Yeah? So there's a beautiful um, example of this Jesuit who actually take on Francis and try to be as Franciscan as, uh, I think sometimes he's more Franciscan than we are. So we begin the prayer. and okay, this canticle, a song of creatures. Most high or powerful good Lord, Yours are the praises, the glory, and the honor, and all blessing. To you alone, Most High, do they belong, and no human is worthy to mention your name. Praise be you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Sir Brother Son, who is the day and through whom you give us light, and is beautiful and radiant with great splendor, and bears the likeness of you, Most High One. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon and the stars, in heaven, you form them clear and precious and beautiful. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Wind, and through the air, cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather, through whom you give sustenance to your creatures. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Water, who is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Fire, through whom you give, you light the night, and his beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister, Mother Earth, who sustains us and governs us and who produces various fruit with colored flowers and herbs. And praise be you, my Lord, through those who give pardon for your love and bear infirmity and tribulation. Blessed are those who endure in peace, for by you, Most High, shall they be crowned. And praise be you, my Lord, through our sister bodily death, from whom no, li no one living can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Blessed are those whom death will find in your most holy will, for the second death shall do them no harm. Praise and bless my Lord and give him thanks and serve him with great humility. So who is this Francis who wrote the canticle? So the first uh, biographer, um, Thomas of Celano, a friar, actually talk about Francis in this way as he wrote the canticle. You can see Francis here, very happy, la, eyes wide open, smiling with brother lamb and sister rabbit all around. Um, and Celano says, from this reflection, the, the canticle, he often overflowed with amazing, unspeakable joy as he looked at the sun, gazed at the moon, or observed the stars in the sky. 
what simple piety, what pious simplicity. So this is what the first biographer uh, wrote on, uh, for the occasion of his canonization in 1228. Yeah? But let's look at another side of Francis. And this is Brother Robin's painting, and you can see Francis blindfolded, right? This is not blindfolded contest. Huh? Uh, Francis was actually blind. He went to the uh, Egypt uh, to talk to the Sultan yeah, during the Crusades to, to, to preach peace. And when he came back from the Muslim lands from, from, the, from the East, he actually caught an eye disease. So he'd been suffering from eye disease for a long time. So Francis was blind. So imagine, uh, when you're blind, uh, you've got eye problem, what gives you the most pain? It's actually light. During the day, where does the light come from? The sun. During the night, where does light come from? Fire. And yet, Francis used brother sun, brother fire, through them to praise God. The very thing that gave him suffering, he praised God through these creatures. So that's the depth of the spirituality of St. Francis. Not your happy clappy, oh, so nice, brother, son, sister, moon. But it's the very thing that gives you pain that you can still praise God through this pain and suffering. Mm. And that's who Francis really was. And my second point was he... It, it, so... Um, in 1818, they found the bones of St. Francis. Uh, you know this basilica that I have on, on my right, right? Uh, the friars asked the Pope, hey, can we look for his body? Because we have got no idea where the body was hidden. So 1818, they went to go and dig for the body. So they dig, 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 then they found it. And then um, in the 1900s, when medical uh, progress was better, they took the bones uh, and then they go and look for, like, you know, so to do testing. And from the bones itself, they found that he had over 40 diseases just from testing from the bones. So Francis was very, very ill by the time he died. Uh. And he had stomach and intestinal trouble, so cannot eat there. And yet, in the canticle, we hear him saying, Oh, Sister Mother Earth, who governs and sustains us and produces fruits and herbs. Yeah, this fruit and this vegetable and all these herbs that he cannot eat. And yet he prays Sister Mother Earth for the things that she produced that he cannot eat. And then there were tensions within the order. So he was very, he had a vision of how we should live. But there were so many people who joined, so they, they don't know what is the spirituality of St. Francis, so they, they disagree with this way that he wanted them to do. They said, so difficult, the one lah. And then got a lot of tension. So for him, not only he had external sufferings, with the eye problem la, the body problem la, but he was suffering internally. He was being rejected by his own brothers eh. Then he's the founder of the order, and then nobody wanted to listen to him. And then at night, he got insomnia, of course lah. When your heart pain, your body pain, how to sleep, right? And then in this little hut that he was in, in San Damiano, in the garden, um, because he's occupied by nuns, so he cannot stay with the nuns, so they gave him a hut uh, and he stayed with some brothers there. Then got a lot of rats. Hey, Francis don't like rats. Huh? Don't think he said brother, son, sister, moon, everybody is a friend, friend. He actually don't like two creatures, rats and flies. Remember the time in the dungeon? Uh, when people are dying, uh, this dungeon, uh, people die in there the rats would come to bite off ear and to bite off eyelids and the, the pieces that... Then, because people dying got no, no strength to fight, fight off these rats, right? So for him, he was terrified of rats because of, of, of that. And then flies come because when people are dying or dead, the flies would come, right? So he actually don't like these two creatures. And this night that he was disturbed by rats, he said that rats were around him, over him some more. So it was a horrible night. Uh, but at the break of dawn, after something happened, I'll show everybody what happened. And at the break of dawn, he composed the canticle. When the first rays of sunlight come and hit his eye, giving him the pain, he composed the canticle. Praising God through first Sir Brother's son. So this is another picture of Assisi, the St. Francis Basilica right in front of us. Um, and so what happened during this night? So this is a Sisi compilation which is written by his early companions, so the brothers that were with him. So very likely, these this brothers that were with him in the same hut with the rats, line, all that stuff, um, they wrote this a Sisi compilation. It's, it's a collection of, of, of Francis's sayings and what he did. And they wrote this. One night, as Blessed Francis was reflecting on all the troubles he was enduring, he was moved by pity for himself. Like, ah, yeah, I so chicham la, why my life like that la, I so poor thing la, got this one la, got that one. I think we, we do that from time to time, like we lament and it's like, 
you have to tell friends, ah, I tell you, ah, my parents, ah, my friends, ah, my community. Ah. So here God speaks. He was told. Told by whom? Of course, God. Lah. And he says, the voice said, Then brother, be glad and rejoice in your illnesses and troubles because as of now, you are as secure as if you were already in my kingdom. God speaking. Don't worry about these troubles. They're short-lived. But look at your destiny. What you're called to be in the future and forever, you're with me. In my kingdom of love. In my reign of love. So very quickly, let's look at creation. And he was obviously um, inspired by the, the book of Daniel, chapter 3, where we've got praise the heavens, praise the angels, praise the earth, praise the, the frost and snow and everything. Uh, so that was where the inspiration came from. And he listed everything as brother and sister. Why? Because you see God as our common father, our father who art in heaven. So if there's a common fatherhood of God, then we have the universal brotherhood of creation. Everything is brother and sister because who is Lao Bei? Who is Abba? Who is Father? God. So we have a common source from the same good God. Yeah? And then after talking about brother, sun, sister, moon, all the air, la, the earth and all, the next thing talks about pardon. It is pardon those who give pardon for love for your love. So, um, but Francis was all about pardon, about reconciliation, about peace, about goodness within and goodness outside. That we let this goodness mix. Yeah? To let this goodness explode because that's who God is. Yeah? The Trinity, the life of the Trinity. And so, I think we can ask ourselves, what is pardon? Because in the, our Father, we keep hearing forgiveness. That we forgive others just as God forgive us. Forgive us our sins just as we forgive trespass those who uh, trespass against us. And so this forgiveness is always vertical and a horizontal component. Yeah? Why is forgiveness so important in the Our Father? And do I pardon for God's love, with God's love, or is it my own? Sometimes I say, well, oh, very difficult. Like, this one I keep irritating me, irritating me over and over again, especially siblings or sometimes our own family members. They were like, oh my gosh, enough already. Always do the same thing. I said, don't touch my things. Always touch. Don't destroy my This one, always destroy. Then we have to keep repeating and repeating our forgiveness. And then sometimes we feel our reservoir of forgiveness drying up. And I think that's where we give pardon for your love. Um, really, are we just forgiving the other just for the other? Or, or is it with God in mind as well? And then do I forgive with my strength? Or do I forgive with God's strength? If we keep forgiving or loving from our own reservoir, of course we'll dry up. But we need to tap on the eternal reservoir. With God's love, with God's love that is also forgiveness. And then we can keep doing it. We embrace the other in their brokenness, in their ugliness, in their hurt, in their frustrations. But so if we have peace within, we can absorb the horribles person's thing and then we can go back and then give back with love and pardon. Very difficult, I know. Which is why we need to tap on the eternal reservoir, not our own. And some people complain now, all at home, my personal time, my prayer time, my work time, all more, a lot meld into one. I can't differentiate when I'm working or when I'm not working. And so sometimes even our personal prayer time, like, we don't take it seriously or we don't dedicate the time to pray. Because if we want to receive, that means we are actually saying, Lord, I want to encounter you deeply enough to be able to understand what your love means and to open up my heart to give the space for your love to come in. To let your ruach come in, your spirit. Um, so it's really the encountering of the Lord and allowing Him to give us the grace, the peace, the love, the courage, the right words, everything. Don't worry about what you're going to say. Because the Spirit is going to give it to you. So mm. I think your talk about the Ruach is very apt because every situation is different. Every person is different. Right? So it, it's ourselves cooperating with God's grace and God's Spirit to come up with the right gesture, the right 
presence, how we are, um, whether to say or not to say. So the thing is, uh, are we able to do that? Because sometimes when fiery arrows come, we fire lagi more fiery arrows back. Then both sides hurt. Ma. Nobody listening, nobody loving. All you want is just pride and defending. Mm. That's why Francis was all about, not just about poverty. Ah. It's not about not having possessions, but it's about not being possessive. Don't cling. Remember the cling equality with God, something to be grasped, Jesus? Because sometimes we want to possess so even though we have very few things, when we possess, we hold on to the thing, we want to defend it. Sometimes ideas can be like that. We have a particular idea we can't let go. And then when we encounter the other, we die, die, must possess this idea to hold on to this idea. Then we are willing to fight with the other because of the idea. Then we don't listen. So the last, the last question for reflection is, how will it look like if I love and pardon with God's love and mercy? Don't use my, my own way, but use uh, God's way. And so I think this will be my last slide. Um, you can see this is a picture of Francis hugging the leper. And you can see the leper is holding a, a, a branch with green leaves, which means that there's life in this, in this twig. Yeah? That he, the leper felt life. So Francis is showing us at the heart, the genesis, the beginnings of the canticle of Brother Sun, is the embracing of the leper. That what is deformed, what is ugly, what is unlovable. To be able to embrace it. For bitterness to turn to sweetness, so that we can praise amid suffering. What is deformed and ugly and unlovable, if we're able to embrace it and to see God in it, we can actually breathe life into it and to give praise for it. So some questions for us to muse. Can I still praise God in my suffering and struggle? Or am I all about, sometimes with suffering and struggle, we always, it's egocentric. That means we keep turning to self. Ah yeah, it's so pain. Remember the, the I, Francis, like, feeling pitiful for himself. It's like that. We keep turning to ourselves. We don't turn to the other. But in praise, we turn to God. We, we, the direction is towards God. Praise be you. I think today, uh, I think we struggle a lot with appearance, right? Every time, even our phones all got like the beautiful function, uh, whether they're super beautiful or not, then we look so dewy. Then always must have the right, right angle, uh. Then Instagram, we need to post post, post post our muscle, post post our makeup, post post, all oh, this pimple cream very good. I use two times, everything disappear. This serum is very nice. So it's the the appearance thing actually is very important for us now. The external beauty. Is that place uh, to embrace what is not beautiful or seemingly what is not beautiful according to society? Yeah. Um, so is that a conformity and deformity? I know this is a chin way, but the deformity is like the leper is deformed, right? Um, when you're able to embrace the deformed, uh, we are conformed to the love of Christ. We're able to conform to what Jesus wants us to be. To be generous love, sacrificial love, uh, unselfish love. So there's a conformity with Christ in able to embrace the deformed. Just like Christ on the cross is deformed, but Christ was totally conformed to the will of God. So the question is, who is in control of my life? Ultimate control. And sometimes we have to self-empty in order for God to fill us. That's why we're talking about the emptiness. The desire to spend time with God, to know who God really is. Rather than we project the image of God and say, God, you're like that, like that, like that, so I don't like you. But it's like who God really is, you know. You like we, we hate to be misunderstood, right? Sometimes we say, hey, you are like that. No, I'm not like that. Who said I'm like that? We hate to be misunderstood. But I think poor thing on God uh, is always very misunderstood. Because we put so many expectations. Oh, I pray this one, uh, you must give me this. So who's in control? We all are. Uh, we pray the rosary so powerful, so God must give us this thing, this thing, this thing, is it? So who is in control? Who is God really? What is he one of us? Yeah, so I think um these are some of the questions that, that, that we can ask uh, as we reflect on this. As you're talking, I also, well, I'm also getting some formation. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll just do a quick sum up and um, also maybe to just think aloud. Lah. You know, in, mm. in, your, in your series of slides, of course, you give the history and the overview of um, CC and all that. But one of the few things that, that came up was um, when St. Francis went to the cave and he was praying. Um, mm. Who are you and who am I? I think that is 
a timeless question that we can ask ourselves mm. today. When some of us start, we men, we go to our own man cave, we also can ask that question. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And um, one of the things that stood out very prominently for me is um, our Father who art in heaven and all the creations that he has done mm. for us and he has addressed. St. Francis has pointed us to address all creations as brothers and sisters. Mm. And that linked very nicely to Laudato Si. Very, yes. very beautiful. And in the, in the slides that you have just shown, um, who is in control, and that also speaks about um, us needing to self-empty in order for the master to come in and take charge. So, um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Um, I think this will, this, this will um, draw to the conclusion of our talk. For, um, mm. yeah. So, um, we will see you this Friday. Then you will share with us uh, more when our youth have um, live questions after they watch your video. And yeah. um, I've got no more questions for now, but I have a lot of reflection to do. So yes. maybe we... we... That's my purpose. <laughs> Good. No, okay. Desire. Uh, yes. And then use this in our prayer. Wrestle with God and struggle with God a bit and let the Lord speak mm. in the quietness of our hearts, in the caves of our hearts. Okay. And don't take all the questions at one time. Uh. Just... Let the Holy Spirit lead. If there's one word or one question or one idea, that just take that one is enough already. Yeah. And let okay. the Lord really come in and go deep. Yeah, and I think that's better. Mm. Thank you. Maybe Father, you just yeah, close you this session. Me. Oh, oh. Mm. More, more, more than glad. Uh. It's our privilege to have you. <laughs> can you. Can you just close this session uh, for all of us with a prayer and just maybe pray for us as well? Um, maybe I, I sing um, the refrain of this song called Sacred Creation and now I'll, I'll lead into the prayer. Okay. Thank you. Let me take this as our prayer, this song. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sacred the land, sacred the water, sacred the sky. Holy and true, sacred all life, sacred each other, all reflect God who is good. Heavenly Father, our good God, we thank you for this time together, this sacred space together. And Lord, we thank you for calling us to life, and we continue to ask you to breathe your spirit, your ruach, upon us. As your spirit rested on the apostles as tongues of fire, may you send forth your spirit, your ruach, upon us and within us. Let us feel within us the warmth of your spirit, the love, the consolation. That whatever is happening in our lives right now, whether is it that of joy, of peace, or whether we are having certain relationship problems or certain troubles or confusion or doubts and sometimes doubting whether we ourselves are good, whether we have purpose in our lives. Lord, as you console St. Francis, console us as well. Speak to us. Speak to the depths of our hearts. But let us also give time to you, O Lord. Our quietness to you, O Lord, our very selves so that you may sanctify us for you, that you may see us as your gift, your beloved. And Lord, be with these young people, these young souls that are yearning for you, to know you more, to love you more, so as to serve you. Be with them, watch over them, and give them your love, your care, your tenderness. And we ask this, through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. So, um, Thank for... you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so for the rest of us um, who have been watching this, this is um, um, brought to you by the Youth of Santony, Rua series, and this is our third talk. We have a lot more talks coming up, so just stay tuned, and we will um, 
get permission online in this time of um, pandemic. Thank you. Mm -hmm.